Welcome to ESO 201 uh, Thermodynamics. My name is uh, Raj Pala. I'm in the Department of uh, Chemical Engineering and uh, I can be accessed via this email. So typically, uh, when I start a course, I start a course uh, with some quotation from the prime minister or the opposition leader, or at least a passionate outburst from the third front. Um, I was surprised uh, to see that uh, none of these people have uh, made a statement on thermodynamics, uh, but I found uh, a guy with an interesting hairstyle and uh, making funny faces, uh, saying something about thermodynamics. Let's see what he says. Uh, says that thermodynamics is the only physical theory of universal content concerning which I'm convinced that within the framework of the applicability of its basic concepts, it will never be overthrown, right? Uh, so uh, I hope he knows uh, what he's uh, saying and what he's talking about. And uh, even if it's relatively true, okay, uh, there's a certain timelessness towards uh, this truth of this theory. Uh, it's worth taking a look at this theory more deeply, okay? So, so let's uh, move ahead, okay? So at, I hope uh, why at the, at least by the end of the semester, why you would get to, we would get to understand why he made this statement. All right, uh, so there is a lot of material on the first handout, uh, course handout. So these are all fairly factual information. Uh, uh, it's posted on MOOCit. So I'm not going to elaborate on what I posted already on MOOCit. Uh, if there are uh, some uh, questions, clarification that are required regarding the first handout, um, uh, we can take it up in the first discussion. It will be posted eventually on MOOCit. Okay, so, so let's, uh, I intend to cover a few things. Uh, uh, this is meant to be a, the first introductory lecture on thermodynamics. So we will uh, go over something uh, fairly, things that are, uh, all right. So, uh, you've been exposed to, most of the, you students are in your second year, I suppose. You've been exposed to mechanics uh, uh, from your high school. Mechanics, we start with dealing with the particles. You talk about forces, energy. Then when you go to fluid mechanics or uh, solid mechanics, you talk about stresses, strain, strain rates, uh, material properties like viscosity, uh, elastic modulus, and then uh, uh, the pinnacle of classical mechanics in some way, uh, even altering our notions of reality, uh, uh, was developed by uh, that funny person. Uh, it uh, relativity. Um, uh, it has cosmological significance, um, and uh, what is to be noticed is it has. Uh, there's a fundamental constant, uh, you know, of uh, constant of nature, uh, gravitational constant. Okay, so that that uh, much of the uh, things which we talk about in mechanics depends upon uh, this gravitational constant. And then you have been exposed to electrostatics and electrodynamics. Uh, the more modern motion, the notion of uh, science is in terms of field theory, okay, so, uh, so one of the elementary field theory uh, has been introduced via electrodynamics. So you talk about, uh, of course, you start with uh, charges and so on, the existence of charges. Then eventually, when you go to electrodynamics, you move on to fields, you talk about uh, electric fields, magnetic fields, uh, certain properties of symmetry, you talk about the scalar potential, 
vector potential and so on. And uh, the pinnacle of uh, electrodynamics is in um, uh, succinctly uh, encapsulated in Maxwell's equation. Okay, so even uh, at that level, Maxwell. Okay, so in uh, so there the importance of speed of light. Okay, so it's a, another uh, a fundamental constant. You know of uh, universal constant. Okay, a fundamental constant of nature. Uh, was important, uh, was evident to Maxwell even at that time when he developed uh, Maxwell's equation. Okay? So then you are probably exposed or you've heard about uh, quantum mechanics uh, centered to this uh, description of reality is what's called the wave function. Uh, interestingly, uh, when mechanics uh, relied on observables okay so uh, uh the this theory quantum mechanics uh the wave function is not an observable uh square of a wave function is an observable there are lots of issues of measurement and so on all these things are uh not completely resolved okay there are some open questions for example how to make quantum mechanics compatible with relativity and so on uh how do you interpret quantum mechanics all these things are open questions uh, uh but again uh, quantum mechanics also depends upon a fundamental constant h okay planck's constant all right so we will come why why i'm emphasizing on these uh universal constants will become clear in the next slide so these are things which you've been exposed to. So where does thermodynamics fit in uh, amongst all these things? So we, when we're talking about thermodynamics, we will be talking about macroscopic variable. I'll clarify what we mean by macroscopic. Uh, and the central macroscopic variable, which we'll be talking about, which, is, which makes thermodynamics unique, is temperature, OK? So. Uh, you you have an understand we have a notion of uh, temperature right from childhood okay uh, uh, so uh, in the absence of any conversation okay we start with uh, uh, how hot the weather is okay or uh, uh, and so on so you have this temperature is uh, quite an uh, we have a sort of notion we will try to clarify this notion to an extent uh, here. Uh, in this course, and we will, uh, even if the microscopic interpretation of temperature is not elaborated in this course in all its glory, we'll be utilizing this, okay? And uh, more importantly, how to reproduce, uh, measure this quantity reproducibly is will be emphasized in this course. And it's a very powerful uh, quantity that's going to, uh, has a grand explanatory power. That's what we are going to elaborate along this course. So uh, this term macroscopic and microscopic, okay? So uh, we have some notion about this. We will clarify gradually as we go along. So these are relative terms, okay? So macro, micro, meso, all these things are relative terms. Uh, you would want to know whether can we frame it in absolute terms and uh, these terms are they going to be useful, okay? so. Uh, so what we mean by relative terms, okay? So there are a lot of scales in nature, right? So there is this uh, huge scale, okay? Uh, cosmological scale, there's cosmological length scale, energy scale, and time scale, okay? Uh, so that's at one end extreme asymptote, okay? And then there is this, so-called elementary particles, which is in some way is the smallest scale, okay? So smallest um, length scale at least, okay? And then, um, and so on, okay? So these are two extremes, two asymptotes to reality, material reality, uh, which are relative terms, okay? So, and uh, yeah, we have some notion about it. And are there some absolute length scales? So if you think about that, I mean, you can derive an absolute length scale uh, called Planck's length scale, okay? So this can be derived from dimensional analysis of the 
three fundamental constants which were introduced in the previous uh, slide gravitational constant planck's constant and the speed of light okay so when you put this together uh, just by dimensional analysis you get the uh, length scale uh, planck's length scale to be this of this order okay so maybe there is something very fundamental about this length scale but this if you look at uh, this okay uh, you, you may be you may have heard the term nano science nano science nano technology okay so e this length scale is even much much smaller than those length scale even nano micro these are very small length scale compared to human scale but this planck's length scale is too small okay so maybe it is of absolute significance but it is not a useful length scale in some ways okay it's it's the measurability of this uh, length scale is very very limited all right so uh, a macroscopic length scale which we are going to be dealing with is a very useful length scale okay so it is uh, of human length and time scale accessible to human senses experience and so on okay and uh for example if you talk about time okay so one of the earliest way to measure time was let's say pulse human pulse okay human heartbeat okay so when we call something as a macroscopic time scale one simple way of thinking about it is it is comparable to human length and time scale and it can be measured by macro okay so equipments uh that are comparable to human uh, length scale okay human length scale time scale so one of the earliest uh, equipment so to say is a measuring cylinder okay so it is used for measuring volume that is a macroscopic variable uh human civilization had a lot to do with mastery over fire okay so when we knew how to utilize fire in time we wanted to quantify uh, an aspect of fire the sense of hotness and so on a uh, thermometer okay was a macro equipment which was used for measuring temperature manometer okay uh, uh, so this is not just a politically i mean it's not a politically incorrect term okay so this is a equipment that is used for measuring pressure okay so we won't go into this a lot but we'll go into thermometer a uh, uh, lot more okay so the uh, here uh, we are talking about three different instruments which were used for uh, three important thermodynamic variable volume temperature and pressure all right so even though macro scale can be logically reasoned from microscopics that is from atoms and so on Uh, that can be done okay so but that's not its power especially in the way we will be dealing with the macroscopic scale in this course okay the strength of macroscopics the strength of thermodynamics is is in its reproducible measurements okay so if you look at the fundamental laws of thermodynamics you will see four of them and uh, fundamental uh relationship in thermodynamics okay so they are all empirical in nature okay the power of thermodynamics is in uh why uh, that funny guy who had uh, was making funny guess uh, funny faces was making that statement is because of the power in measurements reproducible measurements for example one of the earliest uh quantities uh, relationship uh, of a certain class of matter called ideal gases okay was it this uh, pv is equal to nrt right this is something which you've been uh, seeing from high school okay so how do you derive it you don't really derive it okay so it was uh, measured okay this pattern okay so much of science is in pattern recognition okay you make systematic reproducible measurements and this is systematized uh, in some relationship sometimes called a law this is the ideal gas law okay so not all laws are 
equal okay so uh, so you, you will see okay so this is a relationship of uh, of uh, about a certain class of material so all these things p v t okay so are all macroscopic variables okay so why this is a law that's because uh, it has certain uh, reproducibility in terms of measurements okay and then for example you will see change in energy can be uh, uh, quantified in terms of mass heat capacity and change in temperature okay so how do you derive it's not important to think understand how you derive this law but it has an empirical validity okay so that's what is the power of thermodynamics okay so that things can be measured reproducibility and those set of measurements and uh, patterns and laws that are born out of those reproducible measurement have powerful consequences okay so that's the power okay that's what uh, that's the viewpoint we are going to take in this course and uh, we are going to elaborate on this viewpoint so you will hear this term um, phenomenological okay uh, so that means uh, yeah so that has something to do with uh, reproducibility of measured phenomena okay so these are all what we are going to talk the laws we are going to be talking about in this course are all phenomenological laws okay um, this is almost a tongue twister uh, but you are uh, you get used to this term, at least you should be aware of this term, what it means and so on, all right? So is it obvious, okay, macroscopic and this ma that, that a macroscopic description uh, in, we, we are in 21st century, we know atoms exist. Uh, that was not so in, let's say, even, uh, let's say, 130 years ago, okay? or 120 years ago, okay? So uh, it was not obvious, okay? There are a lot of great scientists who, like Boltzmann, okay? So you would hear, okay, Boltzmann was one of the central figure in a microscopic version of thermodynamics. Uh, he, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, you, you can read about him, what happened to him and so on. So he, he was debating with other some of his peers, okay, so who didn't believe in the notion of atoms and so on, okay, and so on. So uh, as just into 120 years ago, uh, even the notion of atoms were debated, okay, uh, and so on. So is a macroscopic description so obvious? So sometimes familiarity brings in a pseudo triviality, okay, so it's like issues of faith and religion, okay? So we are introduced uh, uh, towards all these things at a very young age. Uh, we take it for granted. There's a sense of acceptance, okay, without questioning. So sometimes these notions of macroscopic variables are like that, okay? So, uh, you know, so we, we have an idea of hotness, okay? You have this idea, right? So, so there's a hot girl, hot boy. Okay, so we have this, that's not the hot we are going to be talking about. Uh, uh, we I'm under tremendous pressure, okay, uh, due to lockdown. Okay, that's not the pressure we are going to be talking about. Uh, but we these are all terms which we have been hearing from childhood. Okay, so uh, so we think we understand. Okay, forces, energy. Okay, all these things we have been talking from childhood. So we think we understand we take it for granted okay so uh, when you uh, when you come to take uh, to get these degrees one of the things you ought to be doing is revisit these terms okay understand it scientifically uh, uh, that's one of the goal of education right so that's what we're going to be doing okay some of this uh, terms we are going to clarify what uh, clarify the scientific sense in this course so at the level of atom, okay, so when we talk about atoms, which is a reality, we can view it. Uh, there are a lot of great, great equipments called scanning, tunneling microscopy. Uh, there are a couple of Nobel prizes which were given in the last few years to visualize in intricate detail the properties of atoms, okay? So when you go to one atom, okay, there's no temperature. There is no pressure. There is no volume, volume is undefined and so on. These are not defined at the level of atoms, okay? So despite that, we have been, we are able to define temperature, pressure and volume uh, at a macroscopic length scale, okay? So the macro description depends upon 
a huge number of atoms, okay? So uh, let's say of the order of Avogadro number uh, of 10 to the 23, okay? So that's a lot of atoms. That large number of atoms facilitates, brings about a macro description, okay? So uh, even though certain quantities, these quantities which we are talking about are not defined at the level of atoms, uh, when we are dealing with huge number of atoms, okay, of this length scale, uh, uh, these things become possible. A macro description becomes uh, possible, okay? It's almost magic, you know, it's, it's not obvious, okay? This, this tells something, something fundamental about distributions. We will talk about this a little bit in this course, okay? Uh, and so on. So that, 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 this description is possible. It's not at all obvious. It's not at all trivial, okay? So it's, it's the magic of reality. So certain averages that are born out of microscopics can be related to macroscopics, okay? This is a central uh, fact, okay? So we're not going to be looking at this fact in great detail, but what enables a macro description is because of this fact that the averages uh, from microscopics, okay? This is a vague statement right now, okay? Uh, you have to take a certain other class, okay? Uh, to understand the statement, okay? Averages that are born out of microscopic, uh, properties that are, exist at the level of microscopics. What do you mean by that? Okay, when I take a classical particle, okay? So how uh, I, all the classical uh, at uh, loss, uh, if I know the velocity, momentum and position of the particle, I can talk about uh, classical loss, okay? So if I go to quantum mechanics too, I can talk about um, its microscopic loss. Uh, so I can, I can, there is a way to relate what we measure, what we compute from microscopic, average it out and relate it to macroscopic, okay? This, uh, this is the central reason why this macro description becomes even possible. Okay, so that's a powerful notion. We are not going to look at this uh, uh, this uh, statement in great detail, but you should be aware of uh, uh, this statement. Okay, this being part of being civilized in 2020. All right. So there is this theorem you might have heard in again high school. Everything, the sum of all knowledge, uh, is uh, put in GE syllabus. Right. So you at least have some notions. Okay, uh, of a, a, all these things, okay? So there is, you might have heard it, uh, about this in um, in your high school called equipartition theory, okay? Um, where uh, every uh, excitable degree of freedom is uh, has an energy of half kT and so on, right? So you can relate uh, uh, excitable degree of freedom at the micro scale, okay? Uh, can be related to uh, temperature, okay? So there's a way to, Think about average, for example, if you have a monoatomic uh, ideal gas, okay? So you can relate uh, how many ways it can store energy. Uh, let's say you take helium atoms, okay? There are three ways it can store energy. Uh, that is translation kinetic energy in X direction, Y direction, and in the Z direction. Uh, so the average kinetic energy uh, stored by a helium atom uh, can be related to uh, temperature, okay? So each excitable degree of freedom, in this case of helium atom, there are only three uh, translation degrees of freedom. And in each uh, degree of freedom, that you have half kT. Okay, K is the Boltzmann constant, okay? So, okay, so there's a way to think about, uh, uh, relate uh, properties of atoms, properties at the microscopic level to a macroscopic variable. The central macroscopic variable is the temperature, okay? So there are some theorems, okay? So which talks about certain uh, properties of Hamiltonian and so on, that, that's not important, okay? At least a statement of theorem, you should Google, okay? In case you've forgotten from your high school and uh, have uh, an understand, uh, have at least uh, be informed about this theorem, okay? So that is what facilitates a macroscopic uh, variable, macroscopic description, okay? So, and also it is, has certain utility, okay? So macroscopic uh, description, there's an economy in a macroscopic description, okay? So what do I mean? For example, I'll take a, a, a non-scientific 
uh, example. For example, if you're thinking about growth rate of a country, all right, uh, how do you think about it? For example, you can tabulate income of uh, all people, okay? Uh, we are not talking about, again, we're not going to introduce demonetization or something like that, okay? So we, we're going to tabulate income of all uh, income, all kinds of income, okay, of all people, and you can keep track of it uh, year to year, okay? So present this data, okay? So this is going to be humongous amount of data, okay? So nobody is going to uh, uh, understand, okay, what these tables mean and so on, okay? So that's not the effective way of thinking about uh, how to present the growth rate of data, all right? So how do you present? You think about per capita income, okay? You pres present it like an intensive property. That is, I take uh, income per person, Okay, and I see how it changes from year to year, right? So when I go to, in, in, in some ways, a per capita income is a macroscopic variable, okay? So uh, that per capita income uh, uh, can be calculated, but it is it can be correlated to the economic health of a uh, country, okay, that's also not obvious, okay, uh, and so on, okay, that is, uh, that's because we can think about these averages, and these averages do provide an economy in description, and it is also indicative of certain features in income distribution, okay, so, the, so when you think about income description, there is an average, and then there are people who uh, are, can earn, okay, IPL play, players who play in this IPL, okay, uh, uh, they are in one extreme, okay, uh, and then there are people who uh, unfortunately are, uh, exist in a country, there are some very poor people, okay, uh, and there are lots of people uh, like you and I, okay, who are in between, right, so uh, so the, what do you mean by that, the, the, what do you mean by this description, distribution is that it's not that when you, when you think about an average, let's say an average is, let's say, 50 in some units, the distribution is not uh, 0, 100, okay? So that is not the distribution we are talking about, okay? So it's uh, we are talking about a distribution where if there's an average centered around the average, there's a particular kind of distribution. For example, you might have heard something called uh, Gaussian description, uh, distribution, okay? Whenever you're talking about relative grading, Okay, the relative grading, how does it, if you are, uh, I'm not going to say this is a C-centered course, okay? So typically, uh, when supposing this uh, course is C-centered, uh, there is C and people who, uh, A, B, C, okay, and uh, D, E, F, okay? There's a distribution uh, in uh, this course, okay? Uh, uh, so that, an average is indicative of certain things. For example, per capita income is indicative of economic health uh, uh, is uh, because the income is distributed in a particular way, okay? Average of a course, whether a course was very difficult or very uh, uh, easy, okay? When you look at the averages of the test score, uh, that will tell you whether the course is uh, was has been very easy or has been very difficult. Okay, so that's that's possible because the average is, uh, is indicative of a certain description all around the place. Okay, most of the students, uh, that's why we have these terms called average, uh, mean, median, and, and variance, all these things, right? So there's indicator of certain description. Likewise, because here we're talking, we're going to be talking about thermodynamics, uh, that the macroscopic description is possible that's also because uh, a certain kinds of distribution that exists at the microscopic level. What do I mean? In the, in the previous slide, I talked about relating temperature to kinetic energy, right? So when I talk about an atom, the, all the atoms are not moving at the same velocity, same speed, okay? So there is a distribution in the speed of 
let's say this helium atom, okay, I, I take as gas cylinder, helium gas cylinder. When I'm talking about a helium gas cylinder, there are a distribution in, uh, in speed of helium atom. Okay, this uh, you might have heard again in high school. As I said, every the sum of human knowledge is in your JE syllabus. Uh, this a maximal uh, distribution of uh, velocities, a better term is max maximal distribution speed. Okay. Uh, uh, so there are an average speed, which is indicative of temperature. All right. So again, you Google. Okay. Uh, again, uh, so you Google. Okay. Whenever there is some term when you hear in this, okay, which I don't elaborate, uh, which might be a peripheral term, you should Google and check it out. Okay. Uh, so when I increase the temperature, my average distribution. Uh, uh, the average velocity, average uh, speed, okay, might uh, change, might increase, okay. Uh, but the, around the average, there are many molecules that are uh, moving, have less speed, and there are many molecules which have more speed too, okay. And there are very, very uh, small molecules that are in the extremes, okay. So that there is this distribution facilitates a macroscopic description. Okay, this is just a qualitative uh, statement I'm making. We are not going to, uh, I'm not going to hold you responsible towards understanding this statement in great detail. But in case you're curious, how is that a macroscopic description becomes possible? That's, uh, you, uh, there is a reason towards this, okay? So this kind of question, if you want to understand the statement in uh, great detail, uh, in, great sophistication. There is a branch of science and there are many courses in all our departments, many of our departments. If you go to uh, chemistry department, chemical engineering department, physics department, all of us offer courses in what is called statistical thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. Okay, so this is a course that elaborates on this statement. Okay, so when we talk about this average, I talked about this, uh, what kind of average? Why is the average so? Okay, uh, why, how do you derive uh, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution of speeds? Okay, so whenever we are talking about average, okay, uh, when we talk about every uh, vote code counts equally, okay, we have assigned a vote for, uh, you assigned a weight for every vote. Okay, so whenever we are doing averages, we are talking about certain weights, okay? So what is the weight which you have to associate for this microscopic properties, okay? So these questions are all elaborated in this uh, course, uh, in this, uh, no, not in this course, there are courses, other courses, which I would encourage you to take in case you fall in love with thermodynamics, you want to know more about it. In the other part of thermodynamics, uh, what we are going to be dealing with is called classical or macroscopic thermodynamics. Uh, the other part of thermodynamics is called statistical uh, thermodynamics, or statistical mechanics, okay? So you have had three mechanics now, okay? One is uh, uh, classical mechanics, which you've heard from high school. Uh, 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 mechanics with you are probably uncertain about is uh, quantum mechanics, okay? Uh, uh, and then there is this third pro me mechanics, which uh, is called statistical mechanics. There is also classical statistical mechanics and quantum statistical mechanics. Uh, if you get interested in this uh, course, a lot more of it can be dealt using statistical mechanics and so on, okay? Uh, that is something in the future, but I'm not going to be, that's not really the emphasis of this course. So microscopic description, uh, what is the power and what is the limitation? So many times you think about physical properties of matter, physical phenomena. What, what do I mean by that? Okay. That is, uh, you would, uh, you might again heard, uh, you might have uh, heard about in high school. Okay. The density of water is highest at, not at zero degree centigrade, but at four degrees centigrade, okay? So if you want to understand the mechanism uh, behind such properties, what makes something uh, 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 some that are pro, pro fluids called superfluids, okay? Uh, uh, and there are some properties of matter called superconductivity, okay? Uh, these are not, uh, uh, you, you know, there's a man, there's a woman, there's superman, super uh, man, superwoman, 
so these are not uh, a conductor okay which wears a cape and flies around that's not a superconductor okay uh, so these are properties of matter certain kinds of matter uh, which have uh, infinitesimally small electrical conductivity that's what you mean by a superconductor okay so what makes a material a superconductor okay so if you want to look at this uh, understand this, you have to look at the microscopic properties, okay? So all these microscopic properties are elaborated in uh, via statistical mechanics, okay? That's of great importance and certain phenomena, okay? There is something, suddenly there's a transition, phase transition. You might have heard uh, about uh, a first order transition, okay? Uh, and second order transition. We, we will talk about this in at a later point, okay? So why, when does a first order transition occur? When does a second order transition occur, okay? So if you want to understand in great detail, okay? Uh, you have to know a lot of statistical mechanics. Lots of Nobel prizes have come about explaining all these things, things, issues of phase diagram, issues of uh, properties uh, uh, which we talked about, okay? So superconductivity, quantum Hall effect, Hall effect, and so on, okay? Hall effect is not something about your hostels, okay? There's something called a Hall effect is, uh, uh, yeah, you might have, uh, you might see uh, Google again, okay? So this is uh, uh, something in physics, okay? All right, so, uh, but even though microscopic description is very powerful, we are talking about big data, okay? This is mother of all big data, okay? We are talking about properties of huge, large number of atoms, okay? So how do you handle this information? It's not at all trivial, all right? So if you to compute properties, you want to propagate, that is Newton's laws of motion, or there are two other uh, version of classical mechanics, right? You might have been uh, Lagrangian mechanics and Hamiltonian mechanics, so you might have uh, been exposed to it in your classical mechanics cl classes. Uh, so you, to really derive uh, properties from microscopics, you have to be able to solve these equations in time. Prop that's what I mean by propagate the equation of motion. Uh, that is solving the equations of motion in time. Okay, so this is there in quantum mechanics too. Okay, so to yeah, you should be able to do that to sample energies uh, of different microscopic configuration. Okay, whenever I put in quotes, what why do I put things in quotes? Okay, so these are vague things. Uh, I'm going to just introduce it. Uh, so that to communicate something, but I'm not going to hold you responsible. Uh, if uh, uh, these are deep things, it even takes one another course to explain this in great detail. Okay, so what do I mean by sampling energies of different configuration? By different configuration, I mean structure. Okay, and then uh, when we, we talked about averages in the previous slide, right? So when you do an average, you are talking about weights. These weights can be obtained by sampling energies, okay? There is uh, of different configuration, okay? So how do you do these things? You have to solve microscopic uh, equations of motion, okay? So again, this is what we deal with in statistical thermodynamics, it's statistical mechanics. Uh, just to emphasize, okay? So I'm telling you all these things about statistical mechanics to tell you that there exists another world of microscopics, uh, which helps you justify macroscopic thermodynamics, okay? But this course is about macroscopic thermodynamics, okay? Not about statistical mechanics or statistical thermodynamics, okay? So uh, as you grow as a student, as a scientist, okay? Or uh, as, uh, as your scientific uh, personality, okay, scientific psyche develops, you should develop a maturity and what can be measured, how it can be measured, and what can be computed and how it can be computed, okay? So every scenario, okay, uh, uh, not everything that can be measured has to be measured, okay? Not everything that has, can be computed has to be computed. So this judgment, when do you sometimes use empirical data, okay? When do you use, uh, when do you use computation? This maturity, okay? When do you use experiments? Uh, when do you use theory? When do you use computation? This maturity is 
something that you need to be developing as you progress as uh, a student okay so that's something which you see we will talk about this a little bit okay so uh, okay uh, so this maturity okay these are uh, two okay experimentalist and theorist okay that was uh, a classification okay but with uh, uh, great uh, revolution in computing technology there are three ways of practicing uh, uh, science right uh, uh, science and engineering right so experiments theory analytical theory and computations okay there are three uh, ways of doing things so you have to know how to choose and if, supposing you want to develop into a scientist okay so you have to explore and what you like what you're good at and so on and so on we will we'll touch upon these things okay so uh, uh, all right so much of the macroscopics are depend are as i said the measurements are uh, done by equipments of macro lens scale and the notions are also because of human experience okay so whenever we are talking about uh, thermodynamics we will be talking about thermal equilibrium again why do i put it in uh, 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 quotes uh, i'm not talking about the sense of equilibrium of the mind okay so we are talking about thermal equilibrium this is a very deep concept okay so uh, it will take some time to elaborate we'll talk about this later in this course and sense of hotness okay uh, all right so we have a sense of hotness okay we have a sense of equilibrium okay we know that whenever we are talking about equilibrium something is not changing okay there is not a yogic equilibrium we are talking about okay so uh, we this sense of hotness and sense of equilibrium uh, give rise to a quantity temperature okay so that's important okay so this macroscopic uh, variable temperature is born about about human experience because of human experience the sense of hotness and sense of uh, equilibrium and then we also know uh, something uh, for nothing is impossible okay uh, all right so whenever people give election manifesto okay so i'm going to give you free this free that free this okay so uh, in time it is not going to be possible okay so uh, why we have that notion okay uh, all right so so uh, this notion is encapsulated in energy conservation okay so we'll be talking about how do you get mechanical work okay uh, from let's say some forms of energy thermal energy okay so uh, this energy conservation is born about uh, born from this notion that something from nothing is impossible okay so it's a human experience okay and then we have a directionality of natural process okay so uh, what do i mean by that okay so when i put let's say uh, a drop of ink okay a blue ink in uh, water it spreads okay it just spreads right but you don't see the opposite happen right so when i uh, when i you might have uh, uh, a ceramic mug right or glass okay when glass breaks down it shatters right it just spreads right all the small pieces of glasses they spread around right uh, but the opposite all these glass pieces okay so they come together uh, that doesn't happen in nature okay that happens in uh, uh, bts videos okay music videos okay probably uh, but that's not a natural process okay this uh, this drop of ink spreading about this glass shattering apart okay these are what are indicative of natural process okay so this human this notion this human experience gives rise to we will this is the climax of this course okay entropy okay uh, uh, that is uh, okay that will make you poetic okay so uh, okay so this entropy increase okay so we will talk a lot about this okay so what i'm going to emphasize what i'm trying to emphasize here this macroscopic description macroscopic glass of the four laws of thermodynamics is born out of this human experience thermal equilibrium nothing is uh, something for nothing is impossible and certain the natural process have certain 
directionality, okay? That is uh, what you call an error of time, okay? So all these three important things which we'll be talking about in Thermodynamics in this class, temperature, energy conservation, entropy increase, okay? Entropy, so, okay? So this is born out of human experience, okay? Uh, human notions. So there are uh, thermodynamics, uh, again, so now we are hit microscopic thermodynamics. There is sort of two viewpoints that are possible. A viewpoint based on energy transformation, okay? So this, uh, uh, everything we, uh, uh, we say is derived from Greeks, right? At least the modern science and engineering, we, we keep uh, uh, saying that everything is derived from Greek and uh, uh, the modern India seems to be uh, saying that everything is derived from much before and so on. Anyway, so this for the sense of uh, this class, uh, we are trying to communicate modern science and engineering. So for this, it's useful to look at how uh, things have been derived in modern science and engineering, the etymology of words, okay? How words, origin of words, okay? In which we use in science. So it termi, supposedly, I don't know Greek, I just got it from a, from a book. Termi supposedly means heat, dynamics, okay? There are two, see, you might have already used this word dynamics, right? Dynamics sometimes means change in time, right? In the classical dynamics. Uh, you might have also heard about dynamo, right? So dynamo in electrical engineering, okay? You mean power, right? All right, uh, uh, or even when you say dynamic personality, okay, so what do you mean dynamic personality? It's not his personality keeps on changing, her personality or his personality, okay? When you say a dynamic personality, we're talking about a, mostly a powerful personality, okay? Maybe about fluid personality also, okay? So I think thermodynamics was, this word was first used by uh, Lord Kelvin, okay? Uh, uh, He's not Bhagawan, okay? So this is a lord, okay? It's an English lord, okay? Kelvin uh, in 1854 to emphasize at that time, he, the nature of heat was debated, okay? So the original nature of heat, uh, people thought heat was something of a fluid, okay? When there's heat transfer, some fluid is moving from one region to another, okay? So they thought when heat is transferred to ice, water is a mixture of ice and a fluid called heat, okay? So that's what they thought, okay? That's what makes liquid water, okay? Ice combining with the fluid uh, called heat, um, okay? So that's what they thought, okay? So, so to, that's a wrong notion, okay? To emphasize heat, heat is associated with motion of microscopic atoms, okay? Atoms are jiggling around, uh, some faster, some slower, um, and this, that is, uh, with these faster and slower uh, velocity speeds, you can associate an average, okay? That average can be correlated to temperature, okay? So these notions, um, Kelvin, Lord Kelvin wanted to emphasize. So to emphasize this notion, uh, he 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 framed this word thermodynamics, okay? That is uh, heat as motion, okay? So there's a, yeah, okay? So that's, uh, we will, again, I'm putting it in quotes because I'm going to emphasize later in this course, okay? So it is also, see, if you look at science, a lot of science is about unification, okay? So, uh, so what we think is different when we are talking about unification, we are talking about, uh, we, we are trying to say that what looks different is not different at all, okay? So there was electricity and magnetism, okay? Uh, one of the greatest uh, classical physicists, okay? Classical scientists, okay? So Maxwell, okay? So he unified, uh, Faraday, so one of my favorite scientists, okay? So Faraday uh, was very, made, great measurements, intuitive uh, measurements, okay? Uh, and then what Maxwell unified electricity and magnetism, okay? So that's a great unification, okay? Uh, and then uh, what does thermodynamics do, okay? So you have a sense of uh, this unification, okay? So on a, uh, on a cold winter day, when we do this, okay? What are we doing, okay? When we do this, in a way, we are exploiting this unification between 
mechanics and heat right i am uh, there is motion here what is this motion generating it's generating heat and then i do this and then i put it here right uh, uh right so uh okay so th th this indicates that a unification right people when uh, uh, friction okay so when when i'm pulling something okay i am moving something i am generating heat right so in fact there's one way to melt things right by generating heat right so uh so in thermodynamics is indicative of a great unification unification between mechanics and heat okay so in the old times this branch of science and engineering related to heat was considered to be a different uh, different from mechanics okay thermodynamics brought in uh, a grand unification as important as what maxwell did for uh, electricity and magnetism all right so okay so this uh, okay that is one view viewpoint uh, which involves energy transformation okay people are talking about energy conversion efficiency and so on and there is another viewpoint mostly taken uh, by physicists and so this, this energy transformation is what we emphasize in uh, engineering okay so most of the students who take this class are from engineering departments and most of the the textbooks which we'll be uh, using is uh, uh, sometimes called engineering thermodynamics uh, but that shouldn't discourage uh, scientists okay uh, science students students from physics chemistry biology uh, okay so i'll try to give lots of science examples too okay so uh, there's a viewpoint regarding energy transformation uh, the limitations efficiency of energy conversion and so on there is also another viewpoint okay so uh, meaning of macroscopic measurements okay so uh, involving t this t capital t is uh, temperature small t is time okay so when uh, the, the this thermodynamics is a theory underlying macroscopic measurements okay that is another viewpoint okay so we will try to uh, the both viewpoints are important okay so when we are for example when you are going to be studying combustion okay this combustion is important in rocket okay there are some aerospace engineers here okay so rocket propulsion okay is very much dependent upon combustion of solid propellants and so on okay so there we will be using lot of thermodynamic measurements okay so uh, we'll see in all of chemical engineering okay chemical engineering will be talking about uh, separations okay so uh, distillation okay so there you need to use properties okay uh, of uh, fluids and so on okay and uh, engines okay so in mechanical engineering and uh, electrical engineering so we will we will we'll look at that okay so equation of state okay so there is a viewpoint uh, there are, uh, in summary there are two different viewpoints energy transformation which is the major viewpoint we'll be dealing with and there's also a viewpoint where thermodynamics is the theory of uh, underlying macroscopic measurements involving temperature and the small t okay which is time okay air of time see so what do you mean by that see when we talk about time all right we are not just talking about just change okay there is a natural change which which you we talked about a few slides uh, ago right there is shattering of glass okay which seems the time seems to evolve in a particular way okay in reality when i uh, mix a drop of oil into drop of water uh, drop of ink into water okay uh, that it spreads in a particular way okay this is what i mean by air of time okay uh, that's where uh, thermodynamic uh, thermodynamics the scientist practicing thermodynamics uh, becomes a point okay when we talk about air of time okay so uh, we, we will elaborate these are two uh, in the two different viewpoints we'll touch upon to the, these two viewpoints in this class all right so uh, that's what we will cover okay so I'm, what we also will not cover okay we'll, i want to just summarize the last slide so in this course okay this course is could have been better uh see there is a historical reason why we use this term thermodynamics okay so all the things which we are going to be dealing in this course is about systems under equilibrium 
okay so maybe a better nomenclature could have been thermostatics okay so things that don't change things that are, that are in equilibrium we are going to be talking about macroscopic description of such systems okay you may ask most of the engineering okay most of sciences involve transformation right so when we are only talking about equilibrium are we talking about so called dead systems so there is the beauty of thermodynamics okay so there is a clever way of uh, talking about transformation we talk about this transformation using what are called quasi start quasi static what do i mean by quasi uh, uh so that means almost okay uh, uh so you may you may you may call uh, all politicians are quasi honest okay uh, that means they're almost honest okay uh, it's meant to be a joke all right uh, so uh, what do a quasi static okay so that's the way when whenever we are going to be talking about transformation okay we are going to be uh, talking about quasi static process because i we will develop a powerful way to describe thermodynamic systems under thermodynamic equilibrium we will use this to think about things that are changing think about transformation okay all right what we will not these are the two things which we will be doing in this course what we will not be doing are we will not be addressing uh non there is a branch of thermodynamics called irreversible thermodynamics uh there is a linear non equilibrium thermodynamics okay so where we'll be talking about uh we not in this course okay that's a course altogether different okay that's again still macroscopic thermodynamics i'm not talking about statistical thermodynamics or statistical mechanics uh uh so we we are talking about uh, we will be in in this branch called irreversible thermodynamics we'll be talking about fluxes and forces so what kinds of forces can okay, so you you heard about forces in classical mechanics electricity mechan electricity and magnetism so here uh, that's not the forces we are going to be talking about in uh, in, in in irreversible thermodynamics okay so there is a temperature driving temperature difference between uh, two points in space in material medium so uh, even without material medium it can happen in temp radiation also okay so this temperature difference is a driving force for heat flux okay so there can be a uh, a uh, pressure difference okay that can be driving force for momentum flux there can be concentration difference that can be a driving force for diffusion flux okay so you are relating fluxes to forces okay the what forces give rise to what forces okay what forces give rise to what fluxes is uh, and the thermodynamics of such things fluxes and such forces is what we will uh, is dealt with in linear non equilibrium thermodynamics that's not a topic we will be doing uh, here in this okay course that's again very important but that's not what we are going to be doing in this course and then uh, so this this uh, on sagar okay the lance on sagar okay he got a nobel prize in chemistry for developing a lot of this irreversible thermodynamics that are near equilibrium uh, you will uh, you, you, he developed something called on sagar reciprocal relationship okay and uh, these such processes irreversible thermodynamics involve entropy generation Uh, all these things are very important but that's not what we're going to be doing in this class we are going to be doing something uh, else which is also very important okay more important i would say for practical utility and then there is this uh, branch of again continuum thermodynamics called non linear thermodynamics okay this is just an amazingly beautiful theory okay how do uh, order okay emerges due to long range coherence correlation giving rise to what are called dissipative structures okay so see uh, uh, what do you mean by that this looks like a lot of jargon uh, apologize for that see when whenever we are talking about thermodynamic equilibrium for this okay so there is an uh, unique thermodynamic equilibrium okay so uh, there are reasons why it's so okay so in these systems okay there are, these are what are called so called dissipative structures 
they are multiple ordered structures okay it the, the system can move from one ordered system uh, to another ordered system okay so due to a variety of reasons okay energy input and long range coherence and so on okay these are what is dealt in uh, non equilibrium thermodynamics okay these have great implications to biology okay so Uh, entropy and biology okay this is fascinated continues to fascinate scientists okay i hope you also get fascinated by all these things okay so all right so uh, okay uh, see one of the uh, reasons why we have all these core courses is to get you excited okay uh, i hope when uh, uh, see uh, certain things i'm going to introduce i'm not going to elaborate clarify okay uh it i hope it appears mystical to you okay that is done for a reason okay to get you excited to get you to read and go take other interesting courses okay uh, that's one of the reasons for doing all these things okay so it this nonlinear thermodynamics has great implications to biology okay so biology is it's just fascinating right uh right so uh so there's uh, another great scientist called prigozhin he got nobel prize again uh, he he did a lot of things about dissipated structures so these four topics which are marked in blue are not something which we uh, will be dealing with this course these are very important probably there are some uh, electives uh, that are offered in across departments uh, that will that from where you can learn all these things so we will be talking about these two things okay terms for systems under macroscopic description for systems under equilibrium and transformations uh, which occur via uh, quasi static process okay so uh, let me stop here and uh, thank you